Trying to make a video my Elon Musk is a knucklehead at a reasonable length is quite challenging. You see, Elon's self-image, which he has sold to the public, is that he's this visionary entrepreneur battling the odds. He's gonna take us to Mars. He's a genius, the real life Iron Man. But you see, this image of this quirky science messiah is completely intentional. You see, Musk is aware of what he means to his fans. And I am obsessed with Elon Musk, AKA Electric Jesus or the Electric Messiah. I am obsessed with him because He's amazing. And how he cultivates their feelings. Musk needs people to believe this myth because his whole business depends on it. And I myself bought into this myth. I have the flamethrower, read his autobiography, posters on the wall. I was that cringy Elon Musk fan until I found out that Elon really is just LARPing as this genius inventor. And the reality is that he's just the glorified investor. You could say that Musk is like Donald Trump, but for the kind of people that upgrade their smartphone every year, both have cults of personality. And that's what we're talking about today. The cult of personality behind Elon Musk. Now to create a strong cult of personality, a few things are needed. First, a leader. And second, a founding myth that the common man can relate to. Like for example, the North Korean Sung family this story is that they fought an epic battle with a small resistance of soldiers and drove Japan right out of Korea, uniting the entire country. But you see, the story is uh, largely inflated, like most founding stories are. The reality is that Japan was fighting off the USA and the USSR, and these small North Korean attacks were more of a nuisance than a threat. But it doesn't matter, because that origin story has been sold. And likewise, you could say Elon Musk's story has been embellished as well. Now, when asked about his upbringing, Musk will state how his mother May worked five jobs to feed the family and that Elon and Kimball took turns sleeping on the floor and the couch and the carpet. Elon's story is that he grew up as a poor boy and through his hard work with no handout, he became the billionaire we all know and love today, living that American dream. But from interviews with his father, it's a bit of a different story. Now you see, Elon grew up in South Africa during the apartheid, where it was an all white government that enforced black segregation against its citizens until 1991. And being from a white family, the must had the upper hand in society. His father owned an emerald mine, which is essentially used slave labor. And this allowed the family to live extravagantly. From his own father quoted in 2018, we were very wealthy. We had so much money at the time that we couldn't even close our safe. I drove them to school in a convertible Rolls Royce. They had thoroughbred horses to ride and motorbikes at the age of 14. They were spoiled, I suppose. Now, does that sound like someone that grew up super poor? I don't think so. Now his father using this blood diamond money paid for the boys to attend one of the most prestigious private schools in all of South Africa, the Pretoria Boys High School. One of a dozen schools across South Africa that was a part of the white only education system. And speaking of race, Tesla under Elon has faced dozens and dozens of lawsuits about the toxic hotbed of racism and discrimination at Tesla. Employees have claimed that the environment is straight from the Jim Crow era. Quotes such as, monkeys work outside. People like you don't move up in leadership positions. Hey boy, come here, N-word. Coming from Tesla upper management. But here's the cherry on top. When all of these complaints about the racism against black workers were brought up to Elon Musk, he sent out an email to the entire staff telling his workers that they should be a little bit more thick skinned. But this isn't just about racism. Elon loves memes and the 69 jokes, but when the word union is brought up, oh, that scares the living out of Elon. Now, even though Musk likes to call himself a socialist, like on Twitter right here, he does not like organized labor. He has fought every tooth and nail to prevent his workers from unionization for years. But with a slew of lawsuits, allegations, labor violations, a worker in 2017 wrote an article detailing the disgusting conditions at the Tesla factory and gave a reason for the workers to unionize. See, this guy detailed how Tesla workers on average earn about $17 an hour when the average union worker in the United States makes about 28. And mainly how the union would improve the lives of everyone else because nearly every other auto manufacturer is unionized. And what was uh, Elon Musk's response? Yeah, that guy's a plant from the United Auto Workers Union, which has an allegiance to the giant car companies that are out to get him. You see, Musk wrote an email going point by point, breaking down this guy's argument. And he said, quote, the forces against us are many and incredibly powerful. He then compared all these unionization efforts to a 
David versus Goliath battle where Tesla, the highest valued automaker in the world, was David in the situation, the small guy. So Musk wanted to throw his factory workers a bone. You know, he wanted to improve life for everyone that worked for him. So in the same email that was leaked to the press, Elon said, once Tesla becomes a profitable company, we're gonna be doing things that I've wanted to do for ages. So what would that be? Paying his workers better, giving them better benefits, maybe making the factory not so dangerous. No, 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 no. It's even better. He wanted to throw them a really amazing party if they didn't unionize. Quote, there will be little things that come along, like free frozen yogurt stands scattered along the factory. And my personal favorite, a Tesla electric pod roller coaster, wait, with an optional loop to loop route, of course, that will allow for fast and fun travel throughout our Fremont campus, dipping in and out of the factory and connecting all the parking lots. It's going to get crazy good. Elon Musk wanted the promised roller coaster if they agreed not to unionize. No wonder why people want to go socialist. I completely get it. And here's the other kicker. Tesla's been profitable since 2020. So Elon, where the Froyo stands? Where's the roller coaster? I don't really see it. You see, but Musk is the true BS merchant, the ultimate attention seeker. So remember this story a uh, few years back? We are following breaking news out of Thailand at this hour. What everyone has been waiting for, authorities say that high risk operation is now underway. They are going to try and pull out that youth football team out of that flooded cave where they have been trapped. Yeah, that news story about the kids in Thailand, you know, trapped in a cave. So Musk saw that news and immediately turned up in Thailand with the miniature kid-sized submarine that he said would rescue the kids. And he made sure the world knew about this, that the billionaire was going to save the kids, just like his big hero Iron Man. But the Thai authorities agreed that this thing wouldn't work. And so did a British diver named Vernon Unsworth, who ended up actually saving the kids from the cave and called out Musk Submarine for just being a giant PR stunt and then told them, this is the best part, to shove the submarine where it hurts. So what did Musk do when he's questioned about his intentions about trying to save these kids? Well, he ended up calling Vern Unsworth a on Twitter. And of course, Unsworth sued him for defamation in a lengthy court case. Musk said that calling someone a was just a popular slang term from his childhood in South Africa. People online immediately disagreed with that. And then emails revealed that Elon had even hired a private investigator to look into Unsworth after the tweet to find evidence of him being a saying something and hiring people to make it true. But battling one of the richest men in the world in the courtroom, Musk, uh, of course, he won that case. You see, the jury ruled that Musk tweets, they were just a joke. That even though Unsworth's name is still destroyed to this day, if you go and Google and look it up, it was just all for a joke. And if you don't get it, now you see, has Elon done impressive things? Yeah, he really has. Sending rockets into space, making the electric car super fast. I'm not doubting that what he's done isn't impressive. See, the inability of all these controversies to stick to him is a testament to his fan base. You see, Musk is in a special place in our society, unlike other billionaires. Smoke meat? Smoking meat. Smoking these meats. <laughs> it's a position that allows him to be free from any scrutiny. But in all fairness, it's really hard to get mad at anyone for getting sucked into this Elon Musk cult of personality. With the environment collapsing and economic regression, must promise of a better future is an attractive thing to believe in. You're just gonna have to buy a Tesla first. Thank you so much for watching the video and I just have to say, I didn't buy this. Peace.